Okay, well now we should try to actually work this out quantitatively. So let's go ahead now and try to work this out. Can we do this? Oh, okay. Yeah, so you're trying to react these with each other. So let me help you with this. Um, here's the way we should do this. Um, we should imagine that first we're adding the calcium nitrate, and later we're adding the calcium hydroxide. Okay. That, that's the best way to think through this problem. First we're reacting the calcium nitrate. All right, we don't have to put it back, but first we're reacting the calcium nitrate, and then we're reacting the calcium hydroxide. So let's start by just writing the equation for calcium nitrate. Forget about the calcium hydroxide. Oh, let's just write the equation for calcium nitrate. Okay. So it's going to be Now we need to write second reaction for that, and then we can... We need to finish with the first reaction first. So let's do an ice table for this reaction. Oh, okay. We need to let this reaction finish and then do the second reaction. Okay. Now, do we know how much calcium nitrate we're starting with initially? Oh, yeah, yeah, we are. We Right. Remember that we only want to use x as a last resort. We only use x as a last resort. Well, in this case, we don't need that last resort. We know how much calcium nitrate we're starting with, 0.1 molar. How much calcium ions are we starting with? Zero, zero. Right, because that hasn't had a chance to dissolve yet. This is going to be twice this because of the coefficients. Now, how did you know that this we were going to use up all the calcium nitrate? Because uh, the, we cannot go over Ksp. Like, I mean, we cannot dissolve more than it, the solution can take. Like, that's true. But how did you know? How did you know we were going to use up all of the calcium nitrate? How did How do you know that we're not going to use up less than the 0.1 molar? How do you know this change will be 0.1 molar rather than less than 0.1 molar? Here's how we figured that out. Um, do we expect this to be slightly soluble or completely soluble? It's uh, soluble completely because uh, NO3 is, um, it dissolves in everything. That was one of the solubility rules we yeah. memorized at the start. We memorize there's three things that are pretty much completely soluble with everything. Nitrate, Nitrate, potassium, and sodium. That's how you knew that we were going to use all of this up. So another way to put it is, how did you know that all of this was going to dissolve? How did you know that all of it would be dissolved? And dissolve? Because you can always dissolve as much nitrate as you like. Okay. You can always dissolve as much nitrate as you like because it's completely soluble. So it has nothing to do with the KSP. Remember that this compound doesn't have a KSP because it's not going to equilibrium. It's going to completion. This is a dissolution reaction that goes to completion. This is like a strong acid, kind of. Okay. This is a reaction that goes to completion. It doesn't have a KSP because nitrate is completely soluble with everything. Okay. okay. So good. that told us what these concentrations were going to be here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, now we have to carefully do the ice table for the calcium hydroxide. And again, remember that we should think that the calcium hydroxide reaction is happening after the calcium nitrate reaction is finished. 
we should be imagining that the calcium hydroxide reaction happens after the calcium nitrate reaction is finished. So let's now do the reaction in the ice table for the calcium hydroxide. Is it like going to use calcium That's really good. You worked that out. But let's talk about that a little because that, that's important. I think you worked that out. Okay, now, so what's the initial amount of calcium here? Um, it's 0 0.1 molar over. Because remember I was emphasizing this reaction starts after this reaction is finished. So if this reaction ended with 0.1 molar calcium, that carries over to now this reaction is initially starting with 0.1 molar calcium. This is the common ion. Right? This is the common ion that is going to alter what this reaction is. Because we've already dissolved calcium from the calcium nitrate, that is going to limit how much calcium we can dissolve from the calcium hydroxide. Mm -hmm. Before, with pure water, there was zero calcium that we were starting with. And then we could dissolve a lot of calcium from the calcium hydroxide. But now we already have calcium that we've dissolved from the calcium nitrate. And that's going to limit how much calcium we can dissolve from here. But it's good that you saw this would be zero, because we haven't made any hydroxides yet. We haven't made any hydroxides. Uh, now, what, uh, I think you put an X here, right? Yeah. What, what does that X stand for? How much uh, calcium hydroxide we start with? Yeah, or maybe how much calcium hydroxide we're adding. Yeah. Remember that now we're doing this step. Now we're finally ready to do this step and saturate the solution. Mm -hmm. We weren't ready to do that yet until we finished the previous equation. But now we're ready to saturate the solution. So what is the name of, the, of this X here? What concept does that represent? Molar. Molar solubility of um, calcium hydroxide. Yeah, it's so the it's common, good. Uh, ion. Good, well put. In the yes. presence of the common ion. Excellent, that's right. Now X stands for the molar solubility of calcium hydroxide in the presence of this calcium nitrate. Earlier we figured out the molar solubility of calcium hydroxide in pure water. So now this X stands for the molar solubility of the calcium hydroxide here. So I don't want to forget that, so I'm going to write that down. X is what we're using to stand for our variable. X is the molar solubility of the calcium hydroxide. Well, that's the exact amount that you need to add to saturate the solution. So that's exactly how much you have to add for our step two, saturate the solution. Now, how did you know that all of this was going to dissolve? But, well, that's the definition of the molar solubility. If you add the molar solubility, it can completely dissolve. This would be plus X. It's good that you saw this would be plus 2X because of this coefficient. Then this would be 0. This would be 0.1 plus X. This would be 2x, so you worked all of that out. That was very good. So now we can do the q. Right. So.
Good question. Um, is the KSP going to be the same? Yeah, because we said that it doesn't change KSP. KSP stays like constant, like for given reaction because uh, it doesn't get affected by the amount of CA because we cannot dissolve more than KSP allows. So we've already added we've so we've added calcium with this reaction, but does changing the calcium concentration change the KSP? No because the KSP doesn't depend on the actual calcium concentration, it depends on what the concentration would be at saturation. So yes, this is just a characteristic of calcium hydroxide. This doesn't change, mm -hmm. so this is a constant. So we can still use that 6.5. And I think you saw that we have to keep squaring this because of the coefficient of it too. 